Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our agriculture Q&A at our virtual open evening. Um, we've got some of our lecturers here today um, who will answer all of your questions that you have. So please do pop them in the Q&A box um, and we'll do our best to get through them all this evening. Um, so I'm just going to hand you over to our lecturers just to introduce themselves um, and then we'll start going through your questions. I'm going, it's me. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. So um, my name is Meg and I am one of the agricultural lecturers here at Brooksby Melton College. Um, oh, what can I say about me? I'm uh, incredibly passionate about agriculture, uh, particularly at Brooksby College um, and the staff and the students that I work alongside. My specialist area is livestock, livestock husbandry, and then linking into animal nutrition um, and that side of it. Um, but it's not all about cuddling and bottle feeding lambs. It's very much um, we're in the thick of it, pushing out silage and stinking the cattle muck a lot of the time. Um, I'll pass over to Jeff, who is my uh, he's the programme area manager for Brooksby College. Um, and he'll talk to you about sort of how he runs it and what he does as well. Thanks, Meg. Yeah, I'm so I'm the uh, the manager for the land based area, uh, which includes it includes the agriculture course. Um, there is a chance that that some of you students end up being taught by me. I do I do still get in the classroom sometimes, but my my background is in countryside management, game and deer management in particular. Um, so yeah, you, you will as a student at the college uh, on a land based course, you'll certainly see see me around as well. Um, but yeah, for for the real knowledge of farming, it's it's Meg and Andrew and the and the other uh, the <laughs> other ag lecturers that that you you want to speak to. But yeah, you'll see me around. Fantastic, thank you, um, Meg. Can we just um, briefly touch on the kind of animals that we've got um, at the college and and the the site itself, the Brooksby campus? Yeah, of course. So um, Brooksby itself is 850 acres set um, in the rural capital of England in sort of Melton Mowbray postcode. We have a, a range of, um, well, we're a mixed farm, which lends itself perfectly to studying agriculture because you'll sort of see a little bit of everything. We, uh, talking of livestock, we have um, a pedigree herd of Hereford heifers. Uh, well, Herefords, we've got 10 heifers and five cows, all due to carve in March. We've also got some crossbred short horns from our old pedigree herd of short horns that are still present at the college. Moving on to the livestock in terms of sheep, we have um, a brand new fresh faced flock of North Country mules um, that have had a recent scanning percentage of 256. UK average is um, around 200 to 220%. So we have really, um, with the help of the students um, and the input of the students, really nailed some really high fertility and we've got a lot of work coming in March. Uh, seasonally, we have fat stock. So we do, we enter all the fat stock shows locally. So we will have some pedigree pigs um, around on the run up to Christmas that students help, um, you know, feed and produce and show um, at those fat stocks. So Melton, Uppingham um, and, and things like that. We also do the county shows with our livestock. So we will be showing our Herefords and we will be showing our Shorthorns all been well, those shows can run this year. So yeah, as a rule, we've got beef, sheep and uh, pigs, swine. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I think Andrew has joined us. Um, so uh, Andrew, you're muted at the moment though, you might have to unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, I don't know how. So if you just pull your mouse across the screen, Andrew, you'll see at the bottom there, uh, the mute sign, it does disappear. Um, but just while I've got you guys, um, oh, it's all right, don't worry, Andrew, you go. Hi, <laughs> uh, Vigo. Um, if I have a problem with my internet, I'm going to turn the camera off because that helps my uh, internet. So anyway, Thank you, that's fantastic. Yeah. So I am here. Thanks, Jeff, for inviting <laughs> me. <laughs> to be honest, I had forgotten. I was sat there listening to music thinking, yeah, all's good in the world. And um, there you go. Right. So <laughs> um, do you just want to briefly introduce yourself and, and what you do at the college? Um... Okay. Yep. Um, my name's Andrew Spate. I'm, I'm very old, as Megan keeps reminding me. Um, I'm a lifelong farmer and I've taken the opportunity to um, become a lecturer at, at Brooksby since August or September. Yeah, first time lecturing, first time teaching, apart from a couple of days a week for a few weeks um, at Plumpton College. So, yeah, it's all new to me, um, but I'm a lifelong farmer born 
into a dairy farming family, fourth generation, and I love farming. It's my life, it's a passion, and I, I just wish and I hope I can pass that on to um, the Brooksby lot because um, it is a special way of life. I'll just give you a quick tip. My granddad told me, find something you like doing and you never have to work again. And I try and, well, I remind my students, if I can, that that's probably a good way of life too. It's a lifestyle. Definitely. I think you're muted now. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Oh, the powers of technology. First um, time in my life, Jeff, I was staying quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, did you uh, did you want to continue with what you were saying previously? Um, I can't remember what you were. Oh, OK, no, that's right. I was just bad plugging time, really. But really what I was going to say is in terms of um, studying agriculture at Brooksby, the equipment that you need um, would be a good start. So definitely a pair of overalls, steel toe cap boots, and waterproofs, uh, both trousers and top. Um, apologies, there is a goat um, in my conservatory <laughs> going mad. Um, so yes, so, and that's what we need. Um, warm clothing, because whatever the weather, you will be out um, in the thick of it. Um, so I was just sort of talking about that. Have we had any questions through at the moment? <laughs> or I can introduce you to a goat kid, so you don't just think that's um, that's going crazy. <laughs> So yeah, uh, hand rearing a goat kid at the moment, but I'm not, um, mm -hmm. it is an animal, it is livestock, um, but it is running around my kitchen. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so livestock we've talked about, farming we've talked about, so grades for getting into Brooksby College, what are the entry requirements? Shall I pass that on to Jeff? Uh, yeah, I'll see yeah. if I can remember them. So we're, we're, we're looking for five GCSEs, um for for the level three course graded four um four or above um and ideally as part of that grade profile we're looking for maths english and some science as well uh, ideally uh, if you're not if you've not got maths and english you'd be repeating it at college um, and obviously some gcse science grades will give you a bit of the background knowledge that we'll build on in things like plant and soil science and some of the, the sort of crop science um, side of it as well so that those are the the subjects to focus on um, if you're aiming for a level three course lovely thank you we've had a question um what facilities does the farm have i wonder um, Andrew, you teach some machinery, yes, so sure, do you yeah. want to cover the sort um, of machinery side and then we can we can talk about the sort of the acreage and what have you as well. Yes, totally. Um, good question. And this is an honest answer. I believe that Brooksby College has, has the best set of kits in Leicestershire. When I say the word kit, I mean machinery. Um, all brand new tractors, quite unbelievable, to be honest. Um, fair play, they put some money into it. And also it's a very large, I call it an estate. 838 and 48 acres is a, a fantastic resource to have when you want to take students out and just engage in what's going on. It really is important. Um, I know Megan does the livestock stuff and great with the sheep and, and the beef cattle, but across the road there is another world. Um, I've taken the guys out there on, on the trailer, especially the second years, just to get them involved in what's going on. So yeah, massive resource. It's a big a big, big farm, even in the UK standards, 840 acres is a reasonable estate and lots of things going on. Uh, we've got the agroforestry, so that's another little um, uh, project that's going on. And I believe it's probably one of very few colleges that has that resource. So again, all my students, machinery through agri, uh, husbandry stuff, into business management, I've all been involved with that pr um, project from the start. So again, a massive umbrella, if, you, if that's the right term, to engage everybody, including um, countryside management people and the horticulture as well. So everybody's put their foot in that field more than once. So again, a great sort of central place to um, get involved. Brill, thank you. Um, I know, Meg, you'd mentioned some of the livestock we've got. Is there anything else in terms of sort of farm resources that people should know about? Uh, well, uh, the, we've got brand new, um, well, I say five year old uh, lamb, uh, excuse me, we've got the the beef unit itself is about five years old. 
Um, uh, the sheet handling pens is pretty standard for what you see within industry. There is a lot of investment going on in the farm at the moment um, and the students are very much at the forefront of not just working on the farm but maintaining it. Um, they're off down doing estate skills um, and those the, you're doing the jobs on the farm and yes you're learning but what you're doing will stay. We're not just going to make you put a fence up and take it down again. What you do hopefully will be there and hopefully will last um, just depending on how much effort and impetus those students want to put in it on that day. In terms of the facilities um, at, Brook, at the farm we've talked about, but the facilities at Brooksby itself, so that classroom environment, that building that you guys were based in, again, still state of the art, very much brand new. Um, we've got large, uh, excuse me, ground floor classrooms where you um, you can you know pull the shutters in, bring the kit in on the days that are a bit groggy and a bit wet. Um, so it's really hands on classrooms. We've got a big um, Jutland, we call it the common room, which is a bit of a social area, very much the hub and the heart of Brooksby. Uh, there's always lots of laughter, lots of banter, the um, a little plug on one of the students, often a bicycle cycling through it with a, a teacher chasing them to tell them off. Um, but that's just sort of part of the energy and the, the, the style of agriculture at Brooksby is very friendly and very much fun um, and sometimes games um, then we go upstairs um, into the Jutland building and again I hope you guys can visit it soon but we've got state-of-the-art classrooms with um, plenty of computers plenty of um, sort of resources in there as well big open space um, so even if your class sizes can be quite big in terms of theory, we can have um, you can have up to 20 people in your class. Um, but again, there's so much space in those classrooms. It's, it, you don't feel cramped or crowded, but it does create that atmosphere and that energy that any teacher wants in a classroom. Um, and that debate that we like to have as well as ags, um, whatever age you are, we all love a debate and chucking our opinions in. We're, we're also fortunate in terms of resources in that we we can deliver additional qualifications for ag students as well so we've got the you know the space and the kit to do um telehandler licenses and sprayer certification and things like that for the for students that might want to pursue those alongside their studies to just make them that bit more employable uh yeah building on that someone's asked um, can you get a tractor license while you're on the course? Um, is that something students tend to do? Do you want me to go? Go for it, Meg. Yeah. OK, so with regards to your tractor license, um, because it's a, a DVLA license given by the DVLA, it has to be conducted by one of their their men, their instructors, their examiners. But what we can do at Brooksby is you we will we can happily provide you with one of our tractors so you can do that test on a tractor um, if you can't get hold of one through maybe a work placement or a family. What you will also do in, when you're studying with us in the machinery unit is you will all become quite used to driving tractors and familiar with the kit that we've got at Brooksby. So we have um, we have a, a really nice range of tractors. Yes, they're all John Deere for those of you who would prefer maybe a JCB or a New Holland or your posh boys wanting a fence. But what we have is those basic John Deere's where, you know, if you can drive that, you can more or less drive any of the kit. The, the settings are there. We have smaller tractors and then we grow up to the bigger tractors, depending on your confidence and the jobs that we're doing at that time. OK, so that's sort of where we're at in terms of your tractor license. In other licenses that matter within the industry, the short courses that provide uh, that Brooksby can provide will cover you there. We've got um, the telehandler ticket can be done through Brooksby and students do receive a discount. What's good about the telehandler course at Brooksby is that it is um, by sitting guilds and they don't expect continual personal development or CPD. So once you've got that license, once you've got that ticket, it is yours for life. So that's really important and quite handy to know. We also do the sprayer ticket. So we do your PA1, your PA2 and I believe your PA6. Um, but it's not quite my forte. I am a livestock, not sprayer operations, but we can provide you with those as well. So in essence, you can leave Brooks bit. Oh, sorry, do forget. We've got chainsaws as well and health and safety or well, first aid and things as well. Um, so in essence, through studying at Brooksby, as well as getting that level three qualification or level two, you can be you can get those tickets that set you up for employability for life. 
So we've got some more. Oh, um, just seeing, sorry to Nick. I see Ollie's just mentioned that. Do we have a dairy on site? So, and technically speaking, yes, we do, but it is derelict and you won't be going in there. We don't have a working dairy on the farm anymore, simply because the practicalities of running a college dairy and the investments was just too great. So Brooksby decided to close that. But that's not a downer. What we have got around us is some fantastic dairy farmers that are, literally have an open gate policy and we can go and visit them so we can visit um road trees we've got new zealand style farms you classic herring bones um and also robot parlors that are becoming more and more prevalent in the uk so even though you're not necessarily got dairy to hand we have got that wide range of things there and you're not going to be coming out not knowing anything about dairy um so I've also noticed Will has mentioned that do we go on visits? Um, so yes, um, we, when COVID has long gone and we've all had our vaccinations, yes, we will be going out on visits. The college has um, a massive fleet of minibuses and yeah, we shove you all on that and we do go on little tours around the country. We go to Lama, we go to the livestock events, we go to the dairy show um, and then we go out to farms, we go to trial um, patches as well. So yeah, you are out and about an awful lot when we are allowed to do it. Thanks. Just wonder if we can um, pass a question to to Andrew. That, um, do you mind talking a bit about class sizes and and um, to the the numbers of students we've got on the course, yeah, Andrew? Sure. Class sizes. Uh, um, I, I do machinery and the like, cropping, husbandry, and business. So as far as the business and cropping goes, class sizes are great. Um, it's not a problem there. When it comes to practicals, um, let's face it, September, October, November, we got out there and we ploughed some fields. Um, I'm quite proud of that, actually. We probably had 120 students out there at least. They can all say they ploughed at least once, if twice, if three or four times. So, um, yeah, I was, I was pleased to do that. Um, yeah, it's all seasonal. Um, I did change things around and we sort of kicked on and got outside stuff done in those nice days. I call them nice because the weather was decent and long days. Um, but then seriously, as far as study goes, yeah, winter time, back in the workshop, doing a bit of theory and catch up on that stuff. So again, a very farming orientated seasonal regime, if I can use the word, like a regime is that when it's good to go, you get outside and do it. And if not, you um, hide in the shed and fix things. So yeah, a very farming, agricultural oriented um, uh, study progress really. Okay, so we've had another um, question. Is basic machinery maintenance included in the course? Well, I can answer that, of course, yep. Um, it's more than basic, actually. Um, I'm, I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm actually a dairy farmer and we are renowned for not being good at maintaining things. I've learned a lot teaching and lecturing at Brooksbury how to look after things and I'm 56 years old so if I can learn something I can pass that on as well yeah definitely um, maintenance repairs um, just again looking after your gear looking after your kit it's so important um, so yeah I'm, yeah I've learned a lot in the last six months even myself so I can pass that on too it's a big learning experience for all of us Fantastic, thank you. Um, so we haven't got too long left actually, it's gone quite fast. Um, maybe um, could we just quickly cover before we end um, sort of what do students do if they maybe don't get their GCSE results, um, especially with the current situation we've had a lot of questions about what if they don't get their maths or their English, um, can they do them with us, um, what if all the exams are cancelled, that kind of thing. So maths, maths and English they would do alongside the course um, if they needed to. So there would be, uh, you know, we provide GCSE in maths and in English um, if students need to do that. Um, if exams are cancelled, um, honestly, your guess is as good as ours at the moment. We, we need to, to wait for sort of government guidance on that. What happened this year, because obviously exams were cancelled last summer is that that we took the awarded grades that students were given as 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 grades and, and we put them on courses based on those um, if you if you don't get the grades at all then there's a there's an option to do a level two or a level one course um, and work your way up that doesn't 
restrict you from going on and doing a you know moving up and getting a level three in in the future if that's what you want to do um but yeah that, that's the basics of it if you don't get maths and english you can do it here if you don't get the five gcses you can start on a level two and work your way up can I, can I, comment. I just want to sort of talk about that a little bit in terms of if you don't quite if you apply for level three and you don't quite get the grades to even possibly resit while you study with us don't see the level two as a lesser course or a yes i know on paper it looks like a lesser qualification but in essence what you guys have just lived through and what we're living through this global pandemic is stressful so if you if you don't quite nail what you wanted to do and where you wanted to be that level two will just give you um to want of a better word to not sound like a posh person but it'll give you a gap yeah so you've got that gap in that in your study so level two 60 percent practical 40 percent classroom the academics although you're there and you will be learning it's more fun it's a lot le more laid back there's not as much pressure on you as level three um and you can really sort of find yourself find your friendship groups recoup after the stress of, of the academic years you've just been through and then push forward into level three in a really strong frame of mind knowing the college knowing the staff and knowing us so if you don't quite get level three or if you are already a level two sort of standard don't feel like you're any lesser i guarantee when you're in that common room nobody knows the difference between a level two ag and a level three because you're all mucking in with each other you're all wearing shuffles you're all wearing jeans you're all wearing dealer boots and probably wearing shamu wellies in the summer so do not stress if you don't quite get what you want there is a place for you at brooksby and you will have a good time and good fun um so yeah just to, sorry to just completely like yeah don't it's be hard on yourself really if you don't point. quite nail what you need to yeah absolutely we've had a few more questions so if we can just get them uh answered before we end today um so someone's asked what practicals are done in machinery and what tractor operations do we get to do as students so i guess um totally um you get to do everything um you really do get um thrown in the tractor and asked to drive it um could be taking it down from the workshop to the fields um with trailers we've had some fun actually getting through gateways you have to laugh sometimes things don't go to plan but that's fine um yeah it's so a full-on full-on tractor driving you are a tractor driver you're a farmer by the time you're in there doing those practicals exactly what you are i i don't go in the cab with people i quite nervously stand there and let them go um yeah full responsibility uh with a, a, a lot of money involved too what are those tractors 50 grand 60 grand wherever so imagine being a beginner given 60,000 quid's worth of gear to drive down a field um yeah so i do stand there nervously um with confidence nothing's ever gone wrong so um yeah uh, when it comes to actual practical stuff yeah plowing i mean again i mentioned that before an awesome experience where people turn over soil there's something good about that in the human nature i don't know why we like doing that um in the springtime yeah cultivation stuff so we'll be using power harrows and um maybe even get some drilling doing so yeah everything will happen and that's a fact obviously covid does stop us getting in tractors right now but still that was a focus back in september and october made the most of it so yeah full on you are driving tractors on your own fantastic i think that's all we've got time for today um so uh thank you everyone for joining us um and thank you for our to our tutors um who have answered your questions this evening if you have any further questions please do get in touch um the, all the emails are on the virtual open day pages um so probably the course inquiries email address is the best to get in touch with us so thank you very much everyone thank you thanks yes yeah,